Hi guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids and today I'm joined with Lily and it is what we call Found Object Friday and if it's your very first time to our YouTube channel, on Fridays we do this thing where I pick something from my house or somewhere around here. Sometimes I have a camera follow me but today we have it already set up and we have a cactus in a pot with some lemons with a dark or with an orange background and this is because we are using this as inspired by a famous painting by the British artist David Hockney and this is his painting called Cactus and Lemons and we've set up a still life as similar to it as we could with the cactus that we had that was as similar to this as we could and now we're going to draw and paint it on a canvas so um, before we give you more details, let's tell you what supplies you're gonna need today. Lily, do you wanna tell them what they're gonna need? Sure, so the supplies that you'll need for this uh, acrylic project, you will need a, a paper plate for to put as your, pa as your paint palette. You'll need a water jar, some paper towels or napkins, a medium-sized brush, paintbrush, and a small sized paintbrush, a pencil, some acrylic paints, and you'll also need either a canvas, like me, a canvas has a wooden frame backing with, and um, it has this canvas sheet which is stapled it's onto like the wooden fabric back. that's been primed yes. with white paint to make And it tight. this is a canvas panel, it's flat, and it's just a canvas like fabric uh, stretched around stretched a board around rather a board. than uh, wood. And then like glued to the board. Yeah, so they're gonna do the same thing. And if you have, don't have a canvas at home, you could paint on a poster board. Yeah. Or if you, if you don't even have that, what could they use like as a recycling? Yeah, if you don't have a canvas or a canvas panel, you can use a cardboard box, you can cut it up to whatever size you want, and then uh, paint over it white, and then do what we're about to do. And then, um, or you can cut up a cereal box, cut it to the size you want. Maybe something with a smoother texture. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and hopefully you have some paints. We're using acrylic craft paints because they're very easy for kids to use, but if you don't have those, you can use something else. Like you could do it in watercolors or maybe you have tempera. So once you get all your supplies gathered, go ahead and go grab those now. And while you're grabbing those now, we'll tell you a little bit more about what we do. And um, my company, Art Classes for Kids, has been teaching kids art for decades. And we teach in after school group classes. We teach on Saturday mornings and we also do private lessons, we do camps. We do art parties, we do all kinds of stuff, but for the last six weeks, we've been um, doing them virtually, right? We've been doing them online on yes, our YouTube channel. Yes, we've been channel. doing these videos for all of you guys. Yeah, we've been doing them, every, the first month we did them every day, Monday through Friday. And, and we, now we're just doing the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because we have a big surprise coming up for you guys at home in the summer. And we're working hard on that on the other days. So we hope you have appreciated getting our classes for free and we wanna help you because we know everybody's having a little tougher time with money these days. And, um, but if you wanna help support our channel, there's a few ways you can do that. Well, one is that we sell supplies on our website, which is artclassesforkids.com and we are Amazon affiliates. So you, if you buy some supplies from us, which we hope you check there first, we have all the basics for all the projects we do. And um, those uh, supplies, if you buy them, then you get them delivered by Amazon. And uh, you were, are actually buying them by Amazon. We also, another way to show your support is that we have a tipping app called Kofi. And in our descriptions, there's a link to that. And that also helps keep these videos free to you at home. So, uh, what else can we tell them about what we've got going on? I think that's it. No, most of our projects are inspired by famous artists because we'd love to teach you a little bit on the art history. And uh, we do drawing, painting, and sculpting. So, if you're ready, let's get started with this project. So grab your pencil. To First, we're gonna draw the composition that is the 
placement of all the objects. Oh yeah, like this. and if you haven't gotten your supplies ready and you're not ready yet for to start getting ready to this, Do this to doing this project, you can pause this video at any time if we're going too fast or too slow for you. And then you push play when you're ready yeah. to join us. Or if you just want to take a little break, get a little snack, you can yeah. do that too. Yeah. So Lily's going to draw with a pencil, and I encourage you at yes. home and to... And also, I'm going to draw on the table while my mom draws it up so you can see what it is. Yes, and I'm going to lay this picture down. This is the one inspired by... This is the photo printout of David Hockney's Cactus with Lemons. And then this is our version that we did a little example with to test it all out, see what size we were going to do. So Lily's going to draw with a pencil, but I'm going to draw with a Sharpie so you can see it better at home. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our still life. When we're drawing a still life, we look at what we're going to draw and we try to make it look as much as it actually looks. So we need to fit all that into this and notice this is smaller than that. So we got to fit it all in. What we're going to do is we're going to take approximately the bottom half is going to be the pot, the top half is going to be the cactus and below we're going to fit these lemons and in. towards the middle are these cactus flowers yes so let's go to the middle of our canvas and put our finger there wherever that is towards right the middle towards the middle of your canvas that means halfway between sides halfway between up and down put a little dot here that's where we're going to start our pot and we're going to make a really flat smile curve right here don't draw too dark. In case you want to erase, just go really light, okay? And also, this uh, this acrylic paint is going to go over your pencil marks, so don't worry if you make a mistake. Yes. So, now you're going to put a second one just the same. You're doing the same mark twice. That's the top edge and bottom edge of the part of the terracotta pot that sticks out. The, the, tr the brim, the trim, whatever you want to call it. So now, over on the right side, oh no, 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 your left side, you're going to close it up. And you're going to do the same to the other side. Well, you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm going to draw, I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to be putting the flower shape over that. So I'm just going to leave that open. But you can, you can I'm going to leave my, I'm yeah, but since I'm using a pen, no, 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 keep it. So now you're going to go and do the sides. The sides are straight, but they're not straight down. They're straight and they come in a little. So now you're, what you're going to do is you're going to go in and in, and you're not starting out on the edge, a little bit in from that edge. Then you're going to connect those two lines with a flat smile again, like that. And this is how we're making our pot. So make sure that line isn't straight. It's got like a smile to it. Now this pot has a saucer in it. A saucer collects the water if you overwater the plant. It doesn't like make the roots get too wet and the plant dies and all that. So what I need you to do is make the same shape but make it wider. It goes past, just go that far like that. Then you're gonna take the ends, the left and right end, and you're gonna curl it around the back. Like so that. that's like going behind the pot. Now you're going to double that like this. Just like that. You're going to double it really close. And then you're going to make it look thicker like it has a little height. And now you're going to go a little, not out to the ends, but a little more in and you're going to go like this. Just like that. Okay, now we've gotten the pot. Now we're going to place the area where each one of those more flowery shaped cactus, um, they're like cactus blooms or cactus flowers are. So I'm going to give myself a guideline. You know, you can do it with pencil really light and see the first flowers like hanging off the edge here. But I'm going to do that with pen. Your so first you flower is going to be your biggest. Your um, biggest. Then you're going to have one next to it that's a little smaller. Like that. And the, and the biggest one is going over more. the pot. Yeah, I have my one on the right hanging over the pot, but it's up to you. And then I'm going to have a little one peeking out between the two, like this. And then I'm going to have one to the left where I only see part of it. 
So you see those circles I've drawn? That, that's where the flowers are actually going to go. But now we're gonna put the leaves inside. If you have a pencil and you wanna erase like those lines, hold yourself to and show them where you're gonna erase those lines. So if you wanna erase the lines splitting through, go ahead, or you can leave them, because paint's gonna cover them. And then we're going to start with the middle of the flower has smaller petals. And then as they go out, they get bigger, 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 right? So I'm gonna start here and they're kind of pointy like leaves, right? And then I'm going to put another set of those around, but they get wider. And then they go around. Now I do another row and it gets wider. And then I do another one. Maybe this goes all the way out to my guideline. And it gets wider. Now remember, you're gonna have a few coats of paint over this. So I've got one. Now you're gonna do the same thing to the other three. So I start in the middle and then I go around. And then I go around and around. And you can go past your circle guideline if you yeah. want to. And they don't have to be perfect. You're gonna be doing a lot of paint to them, but just placing where they go and approximately what they look like. I think I don't, oh. Oh yeah, so go for oh, all. So you want to get all first one. four if you can. Okay, lilies look great. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the lemons. So on the right we've got two lemons, and on the left we have one. So that means I'm gonna draw. Put two on the right and one on the left. So let's start and we're with the. I'm gonna make the a little big, but not too small. Okay, see this space between the saucer and the edge of your paper. If you could imaginarily fit three only, then that would be the size. So you gotta imagine and envision. So if I had three, I'd be able to fit one, two, three. Oh, they're about this big. So now I'm gonna do this a little lower and I have like a smile and like a rainbow with like a little teeny tiny point or a little, a little shape at the end. Like a C in the like back In the middle, like from your I have a saucer. Little, I have it a little lower than the saucer, but it's up to you. Or no, in the middle. Oh, like, okay. So on the left, I've got one lemon, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the right to start. I'm going to put one lemon that same size, about the same distance apart, like this. Now I've got one on the other side. But actually, I have two on the right, and one of them's kind of hidden partially behind the first one. So that means when I draw that shape again, I have to have it partially behind the other one, like that. And now you've got your two lemons. Okay, so now we're gonna take our pencil and we're going to, just above the lemons, we're gonna make a horizontal line across right here, Lily. So that's the edge of where, um, the back end of where this pot's sitting on. And on the other side, we see it swoop more. So this side, you're just gonna go like that. So I just have one line here and this swoop, swoop, swoop thing. Okay, and now we're going to get to the top part. This type of a cactus is called a prickly pear. So a prickly pear is kind of like a long rabbit ear with another little ear on top of it or something. So now David Hockney's painting here, his were really skinny, uh, you know, limbs to the prickly pear. These ones are really wide. You can do whichever ones you want, but I need at least three tall ones. So the tall ones aren't gonna go all the way to the top, but they're gonna go just before the top. So watch me make one. Like two thirds to the I'm top. I'm gonna go up here, and I want some space because I wanna be able to put one of these little things on top of it. So go ahead and draw one of those long prickly pears. Now make sure there's enough room to put a little one on top. Here, let me do that again. Okay. Okay, now I want two more of those coming out of the pot. They can angle out if you want, like this, or they can be straight up. Go behind 
can go behind another one if you want. And now, each one of those, I want you to put one, two, or three of these little mini ones stuck to the top, okay? They look like upside down raindrops or something. So I just can, can go like this, or you can draw wherever you see them on there. And this one is a really crazy one. That one got a split in it, so it looks kind of like a heart. If you want to put that heart-shaped one on it, um, well, that's up to you. It's kind of a cute one, okay? So I want you to put a few of those things on. And then I wanna see if you see any on the sides or on the way down. So maybe you see one over here. Maybe you have one in front of one like that. Okay, and then maybe off to the side you have one. You could have one hooked to another one. Like that. I'm gonna have one behind one there. Let's see what else. Yeah, I see some behind. This is gonna be a big one going behind one. And then this one's gonna have another little one right here. I'm done. Okay, I think I'm done too. Now, if you can see where this left side of the pot is, you wanna close it up here. If you can see it. Only if you can. Okay, if you've done it, you've done all your drawing and that's all you need to do. So go ahead and put your pencil down and get ready to paint. Okay, so we've got our pencil down. Now, um, we're gonna need our paper towel, our water jar. We're gonna need some paints. We're definitely going to need orange. And me and my mama sharing a palette. Just so we have more space on the table. So we're gonna have yellow, we're gonna have orange, we're gonna need some light green and some dark green. So light green, dark green. We're gonna need some red to darken our orange. We're going to need some white for mixing or lightening. We're going to need, yep, and we're going to need if you want to make oh, the so cactus, blues. yeah. If we want to make the cactuses look like David Hockney, we're gonna make our flowers have more of a blue green. So we're gonna add two blues, a light blue and, dark and a dark blue. blue. We're gonna leave a little room for mixing colors in the middle. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. Okay, so we've got our palette of colors. And hopefully you had some colors, some basic colors to choose from. If you don't have light and dark green, just use whatever greens you have. You can always add yellow to green to get a light green, okay? So now we're going to take, the first thing we're going to do is take our small brush. We're gonna paint in, we're gonna paint the objects one by one and we're gonna block in color. So we're not doing any shading or highlights yet. We're just gonna fill in the color. So first we're doing the lemons. So fill it in using your smaller brush because they're kind of small objects. Yeah, you want to use your small brush for small objects and your big brush for big spaces. Yeah. Or big objects. Yep. And this doesn't have to be super neat, but you do want to stay in your shape. So it still looks like yeah, a lemon, lemon shape, yeah. So once you have your three lemons painted, then what you're going to do is we're going to paint, why don't we go ahead and paint the green, light green, the cactuses, so we have them in. Okay, so go ahead and put that in there. Now you need the, the other side. The big brush. The bigger brush. You're gonna get green, light green. Make sure it's not the dark green. And if you don't have any dark green, uh, light green, mix yellow and green and get a lighter green. Now you're going to fill in all the shapes of the prickly pear. The prickly pear is, you know, the long-limbed cactus. Practically, pretty much your, uh, your only cactus. So this is our still life of the day and it's inspired by David Hockney. And if you don't know what a still life is, well, a still life is like an object that is still <laughs> and you like draw it. Yeah, and still lifes were developed, oh gosh, by like the 
the people in like Sweden, I think it was where it was. And w what they did was, before that, people painted a lot of landscapes and a lot of portraits, but sometimes the weather wasn't great outside and they didn't want to go outside and paint. This is long, long before cameras. And also, sometimes they, um, you know, a model wouldn't hold still for them or they want to paint late at night. They don't want to depend on anything else. So what they would do to build their skills is they would set up these still lifes. They'd leave them in the same position. And if they could only paint for a few hours, they'd go back the next day and work on it again and just perfect and drawing realistically. There, and it would still be there in the same position. Yeah, it didn't move on them. Yeah, all the time. And you know what? That's how they got good at their realism skills, was practicing drawing uh, and painting still lives. So the more you draw or paint things that you actually see, the better you get at your realism skills. So we or love any skills. Yeah, any skills. We love abstracts, but we also like realism. We do it all here in our classes for kids. So anyway, you're filling in all your shapes. And if they're little shapes, you might want to switch to the little brush in the little areas. Or else you just gotta learn how to use that tippy tip of the big brush. So David Hockney, he's a, he's a British artist. He's still alive making art. I think he's I think he's been knighted. I think he's Sir David Hockney now. But anyway, David Hockney, he was from England, but he came to America for a decade because he was very curious about America. And he lived in the Los Angeles area for a while, and he was inspired by the landscapes. He was inspired by the plants. They didn't have cactuses in, in London. He was fascinated with them, and he did a lot of paintings of cactuses. And they loved all the bright colors. He loved he all saw. the colors. He, color, he painted in really bright colors. He still paints in bright colors. So if you want to learn more about any of the artists that we mentioned, you know, go ahead and Google them and, and, look, and then click on images and see all the different art they've done. And, or you can go and look up their biography or whatever it is. So when you get some time, if you like this art and you like this artist, then you look up David Hockney. Okay, so I'm, I've got my one coat of light green and I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. And then, we're gonna move on to another area. So we're gonna go over here to the floral shaped um, cactuses and we're going to paint those lighter green on towards the center. With your small brush. With your smaller brush and then darker green as well as you go out a little farther. Sorry about that. Okay, so. So I start with a light green. And then I'm doing the centers of all my flowers, or my flowers, my cactus flowers. Then I'm going to do the rest of them with the darker green. Later we'll be adding some blues to it. All right. So hopefully you, you know, enjoy painting. If it's your first time painting, well, it's probably not gonna be your last. You'll probably make lots of paintings. We have lots of painting projects on our YouTube channel, so if you wanna watch another one on another day, or even right after this, you know, check out all the videos we have to choose from, because sometimes they're realistic and sometimes they're more abstract, right? So we've got a lighter center and a darker outline. And next, we're going to create a brownish orange color for our terracotta pot. So we don't have that color, but we can create it. And now, pay attention, I'm using my smaller brush and I'm gonna show you how to make a brownish orange. Mostly, it's orange. So I take a few dips, maybe three little dips of this orange. Then I'm doing one dip of green, one dip of red, and, and one up. dip of yellow. Let's see how it looks. Ooh, it's got that brownish orange color. So now it looks pretty good. If it's too dark, add a little bit of yellow. Or white. And now I'm going to paint this whole thing, but I still wanna be able to remember where my pencil marks are. So, you know, going into this area near the leaves, um, the cactus little petals, I've got to be careful. So we're starting with one value. If you run out of paint, it looks really red. 
Oh, I like that because look at the color of the pot. It's pretty close. You can add a little more yellow this time. I think it needs to be more brown. Okay, look at it now. Okay. You could do this with your big brush if you wanted to, to fill this in, because it is a kind of a big space. Yeah. But right now we're just doing it with our small Well, because I had to get around those petals and had to get in that little saucer. So now I've got it like this. It's very flat. It's one color, but that's because we haven't done any shading and highlights yet. Yeah. We're going to save that. For last. Yes. Now I see a spot where I could fix the green right in here. Alrighty. Looks good, Lily. So next, the last part that we're going to block in the color is the background. So we're going to need the bigger brush and we're going to color the entire thing orange. So just start anywhere you want. So I'm making sure I'm getting in between my little shapes of my petals. Are we gonna go below our line that we made? Yeah, just just see if you can see through to your pencil marks. You can remember where that line is. You wanna go all the way to the edge. Pushing that paint around. Looking good, Lils. Wait, I've got to paint one part of my pot this brown. Oh, really? Pot. See, that's me. I found some spots I missed. And I didn't want to color it orange, so I'm doing that right now. All right, this is a lot of orange, but we're gonna be lightening some of it up later. Okay, I'm getting to where I only have really small spots, so I might have to switch out from my big brush to my small brush. Yeah, I'm gonna do that now. Oh, I painted over so ah, Sometimes I just give it a wipe and get rid of some, and then you can always paint over it. I'm outlining some of my tough spots, and then I'm going to go back in with my small brush. Okay, me too. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm getting my small brush, getting these really teeny little corners. Okay, I've got my whole background colored orange, but it looks like I could get Lily a little more orange. I actually have two shades of orange, so let me just see. Score a little of this too. Yeah, I'd switch to your skinnier brush here pretty soon. So you might ask, why didn't we just paint the entire canvas orange and then paint everything on top of it? Well, if we did it that way, which we could do, then sometimes the colors we put on top of it aren't going to be so vibrant. When they have the white right under it, they're a lot more vibrant. So we're keeping it that way and working around the cactus. Because we want really bright colors in this. Just like David Hockney did. Yeah. David Hockney, he did still lifes, he did landscapes, and he also was known for his beautiful, colorful portraits. So you can look some of those up too. And when he lived in Los Angeles, besides doing cactus paintings, he did a lot of paintings of pools, 
of backyard pools because he was fascinated because he came from London and in London people don't have pools in their backyard. Because it's all in London, it's all gray and it's really cold there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got it, Lily. Okay, we're ready to move on. It is. So he was from a climate really different than California. So he really you know, was fascinated with the things he hadn't seen before or lived around. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna shade our terracotta pot. Okay, at least doing a touch up. I'm going over my yellow lemons because I got some paint on it. Okay, so next, I remember I made a mixture to get that terracotta orangey brown. I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make a darker version of it because I'm gonna shade. So now I'm getting a darker version, and this time I didn't add yellow. I just had red, orange, and green. And I got this darker color. Now, on the sides, like anything that sticks out, like for example, these floral cactuses, they're gonna cast a little bit of a shadow underneath. So right underneath, I'm going to repeat the shape of the flowers, right here, by just going like this. And you can do this with your um, skinny brush. Skinny brush still. Now, if you can see inside your terracotta pot, which I can see this little corner, but Lily didn't, can't see in hers, then I'm going to darken that area. Okay, now, anything that goes back in space, the farther back it is, the darker it kind of shades. So the sides are the farthest thing back on the pot. And so those are gonna get a little bit of dark and it's gonna fade in a little. And then fade it in so it's not an outline. Yeah, there you go, you dry brush it out. It's like you're wiping your brush out as you go in. Do the other side and then wipe it out as you get to this, towards the center. Okay, now underneath this little uh, edge, like kind of like the brim of the pot, it sticks out. So that means underneath it must have a little bitty shadow. So I'm just gonna go dark right there, just under that line that was the little brim of the pot. And then on the outside left edge, I'm gonna shade that because it goes back in space a little. Ooh, that got a little messy. Let me tighten that up. I think we'll need to make more of that brown. You think so? Okay, let me add a little more. So I've got orange plus red plus green. I gave the same amounts of each, and I got this color. So now, when we go, that there's those lines that made the saucer of the, um, you know, of, of the potted plant. So now what we're gonna do is inside it, it gets a little darker in the first section because that part's the inside of the pot. Then the second section, leave that that color. And then the bottom section, go dark again. So oh. it goes dark, light, dark. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Accidentally. Well, you can go and do one more here if you want. Okay, and then I'm gonna go dark here. And then it looks kind of shaded. If you want it to seem a little lighter in the front, here's a trick. You're gonna take this light orange, and while it's still wet, the front, you can fade this out. Check out my little trick, Lily. If I want this to look lighter, I fade this out in the very front, like this. See how I did that? You can get, that's advanced. Don't do it unless you wanna be like, really It's pushed. an option. It's an option, okay. So now we've got that pot. Now if you wanna shade it a little more in here, you can fade this out, it's up to you. Okay, I fade that out. Now let's get to these flowers. The flowers, we're going to have some uh, light blue over our pencil marks. So if you can find where those pencil marks used to be, go over those with light blue. And then we're gonna add some shadows in there, dark blue. And you still want to do this with your... Um, your skinny brush. Because a lot, there's cactuses that are kind of a blue green. Some are whitish, like have a, a frosty look to them. Where we're from here in Las Vegas, there are a lot of cactuses. 
It's very important to, if you can, do desert landscaping. Yeah, especially like um, out of the city area yeah. in Las Vegas. Oh, where you see those Joshua tree forests and stuff? A little, yeah. Yeah. So you're adding light blue on top of all your kind of outlines. Oh, I got some blue on my cactus. That's all right. Okay, now you're gonna take the darker blue and with your really skinny brush again, pointy thing, you're gonna go inside some of these petals and add some bluer, some blue. The dark blue. Yeah, you don't have to fill it in, you're just adding it to the green. A little something like this. A little something like that. And you can also make a blue green by mixing half blue, half dark, dark blue, dark green. You can have some blue green areas. Looks good. I like how yours are like on top. I'm gonna do a little more like that. So she's got some darker blues towards the top. Okay, here. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're going to start shading the top part of the cactuses, which are the prickly pear type. So the prickly pear, you know, are these like kind of bunny ear looking things. They actually have bunny ear prickly pears. That's what they call them. They've got all different kinds of, they've got a lot of different kinds of cactuses. Okay, so now you're gonna take the green, the dark green with your big brush, and we're gonna pretend like the light's coming from, we have a window right over there. You can't see it in the frame, but we're gonna pretend like all the light's on the left, so that means the light green remains on the left and you make it be like an outline like this. So you're gonna fill up all the other part. And we're doing this with our big brush. Yeah, so you see how it looks like there's a thin light green line now, but it started like this. So if you can, you're just gonna go like this and leave a little space. And if you have some extra, those little bits that, that are little other petals, save those and then put a little light green on those off to the side. So every one of these needs to have light and dark green on it. So they're darkest towards the bottom and the right. If you need to use your smaller brush in the smaller shapes, then just do all your big shapes first. Oops, that one I kind of messed up. So remember, acrylic paints kind of cover acrylic paints. So if you do something that you think, oh, I wanna adjust that, then just uh, go back over it again. Okay, so I went over that too much and I wanna have some light green, so I just added some light green on that. Since I had my guidelines be a Sharpie, some of my black's still showing, so I'm gonna give a second coat to my light green, but you don't have to do that. Alrighty. That looks really good. Now we're gonna create a blue, oh, she's got a few more to go. We're gonna create a green blue and add an even darker Green blue. So we're gonna have mostly blue. Kind of like that with a little bit of green. Well, let's add a little more green. Now this is going to be our green blue and it's even darker than the green. So it needs to go on the dark side, which is the right side. So if you wanna add some of this, you can fade that in. It could be thin or it could be thick. It just depends on how you want it to be. I'm gonna let it dry brush fade out. That's when I touch it, but then I let the paint dry out and fade like that. So now I'm gonna go over here. I'm adding a little bit of this blue green now in the leaves. So see this color I just created? I'm gonna put some of that on each one, but it goes on the right side because that's my shadow side, or my shaded side. Are we doing this with a big brush or a small brush? I'm using small brush. Oh. I think he, yeah, because I think you might go kind of a little out of bounds if you do the big one. Oh. Uh, 
Can I get a new deck? Sure, I'll give you one of mine. Okay. So we're adding this, and, um, and after you do that, just a little to each one. Looks good. You're good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where is their shadow cast on these prickly pears. Well, right where the flower goes in front of the, the top cactus, you're going to shade it all across there because it's leaving a shadow. And, all and you want to do this with your blue-green still. Yeah, because it's the darkest color you got. And then, if you have any cactus going in front of another one, it's gonna leave a shadow. Like right here, this one, this petal goes behind there, so I need a little shadow in there. And let's see, over here, this one goes in front of that one, I need a little shadow in there. That's about it. And see, oh, now they're looking a little 3D. Right, right in here where two were going in front well, of each other. Blue green? Yeah. Oh, I but if it looks, that. Now if it looks a little too stripey, you know, you can always make it look more natural by having, maybe this is a little, you know, faded out in here, instead of so liney. Now we're gonna add a highlight. So now a highlight is a, the light, where the light really hits it. So I'm gonna take my white and my light green and I'm gonna mix them together and get a super light green. And then using the tippy, tippy tip of my brush, this is the skinniest line you're gonna make. You're just gonna add a little, look at how little this is. I want to have a little like light on each one, kind of like when you see the balloon and there's a little light on the side. And That's like usually with white. Yeah, but this is like a light green. I don't want it to be too, too bold. So now we've got a few highlights. You can even do it on the top curvy part of the tall part. See like that, Lily? So if that's a bit much, you can always fade that out too. They don't all have to look exactly alike. Because mine are looking a little bit stripey. I think I'm going to have to thin this out over here. Okay, so our cactuses are looking pretty good. If you want to add, um, gosh, I, now we're going to add a little bit of green to our lemons. So we're going to take a little bit of light green and only on the very pointed part closest to the pot, we're going to add a little bit of green. And we can dry brush it out and make it fade out if we want. So that's, that's optional. You that's don't optional. have to fade it out. Okay, and then you're going to do it to the other side. Oh, you got it all. I didn't get it all. Someone's like that. Okay, now we're going to mm, get to the background. Okay, so we are going to add some yellow to the background. We need our bigger brush. So go ahead and grab your big brush. And um, actually, yeah, let's grab some yellow and we're gonna add some yellow to the side of the pot area right here. And we're gonna sweep it up a couple of times in here. Kind of dry brush it. You want to see through to the orange a little. You don't yeah. want to have it super opaque. Yeah, kind of dry brush it. Yeah, because you want to be able to see it's like a yellowy orange. And fade it out as you go. Dry brush it as you go, yes. Yeah. Oh, got it on your pot, so you might have to add a little more brown to that. Or else you can try to wash that off. Oh. There you go, nice save. Okay, so now on the other side, remember you had this line? Okay, get some yellow, but keep it dry. And now you're gonna go and under that line, or just at the bottom edge of that line. Ooh. Okay, now wash it off. Okay, now. That's fine. Good, okay. Okay, now right here, see this line? You're gonna put a little yellow under it. Don't make it too far. Okay, now you're gonna fade that down. Just dry brush it down. And it's okay if you go for your lemons a little. Yeah. Okay, so now you're gonna take this yellow, and now I want it really dry, so watch me, Lily. 
takes, watch my yellow. I'm taking yellow, I'm wiping it out in my paper towel, and I'm dusting this side. See, now it looks kind of yellowy orange. Okay. If that doesn't work, just mix some yellow and orange and you'll get a yellowy orange. Okay, if that doesn't work, go ahead and yellow orange it. Okay, next. Now, what we're gonna do, we've got this fading out, full bright. Add a little bit of yellow orange up here, just a little. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some shadows. So, to add the shadows, I'm gonna get that brown that we made for the, the pot. Well, and you can use your small brush for this. Yes, but I'm gonna mix more yellow into it. Okay, now this, I'm going to go over my pencil line, which mine was a paint line. And it's okay if it's not too dark. Yeah, it's good, yours is good. Then we're gonna do a diagonal line from the pot to the corner of your painting. And that's gonna represent one of these folds or wrinkles in the cloth that's behind it. Okay, to the corner of your painting, kind of over here, but that's all right. Okay, and then we're going to make about one finger below, above the bottom, you're gonna make a line going across. Now what that represents is where the edge of the table is and the cloth goes over it. Okay, let me make some more of that color. Okay, so we have some more of that. I dry brush it out and I go across, whoops. We're gonna add, where we have these streaks, we're gonna add some orangey brown streaks over here. We're adding more colors. Just dry brush it, yes. Because we're trying to make things look like there's different values in there, like things are folding. Looks good. Now we're going to add some shadows under the lemons on the cloth. So they're gonna be the same kind of brown color and they're gonna be under each lemon. And it maybe will make it a little darker by adding a little more green. Okay, I'm going a little darker here. This one can fade in. These can fade in a little more like that where the shadows cast all over them. Okay, so now we're gonna put these wrinkles in the cloth. We're almost done. We're gonna use- In the clock? Cloth, cloth, the <laughs> cloth. Okay, so now this makes like a starburst formation. So watch me first, okay? You're gonna make one go down. Don't do it yet, wait till you see all of them. You're gonna do a couple over to the side. It's kind of dry brushy. The diagonals. Yes, yeah, but, diagonals. well, the, the one in the center is straight, vertical, and the others are diagonals. Yes. Then, okay, we'll do those and then I'll show you the next part. Okay, once it hits that edge, which was that dry line, then it goes straight down, even if it's on a diagonal. Let me show you how to do that. Let me get some more paint. Okay, so now once it, it comes over here, this is, now this is the tough part. Once it goes down and off the edge of the table, it kind of goes straight down. Even if that was angled, then straight down. Angled, then straight down, and angled, then straight down. Now those are your wrinkles, but you know, they don't look like stripes because we've got to add some values. So now you're gonna take some orange, put it on top of it and go over part of that line. Here's the tricky part. You go over part of the line and now we're creating different values. And we then we'll light add- Light orange and dark orange. Yeah, and then we're gonna Light add orange and dark orange. Light orange or any orange. And then you're gonna be adding some yellow too. So we're adding a couple different colors to these wrinkly fold things. Okay, now the next one is the yellow, but the yellow needed to be skinny lines. Don't go fat with your, your yellow. The, these are where the fabric looks like it has a highlight. So it's on the edge of those colors that make up that thing. So do that on all of them. 
And if it blends a little, that's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna get some brown and mix it with orange and get a dark orange. And we're gonna start putting some shadows around the pot where that cloth first comes out. Cause it's all wrinkled in there. So it has like more shadows like that. Now, all that blending might have made the edge of our pot get a little messed up. So if it did, I'm gonna go back on mine and clean mine up a little. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna go over here, I went a little crazy. Over here, I went a little crazy. I'm gonna clean it up. And if I want to add some orange and just do some blending in here, I can blend in here a little. It's up and to you. And we're still doing this with our small brush. Yeah. So this is just how we're gonna get these wrinkles. This is the easy way to do it. We could spend hours just making exactly, precisely that exact wrinkle. But I'm not gonna ask that of you guys. You're my young students. You got the rest of your life to make it look like a photograph, but it is inspired by this. And now you can add a little orange into it. If you want to add any more orange to your background. I think that's done. Some, I think ours is looking pretty good. Okay, you ready for the unveil? Let's yes. move our paint and our brushes. Oh, wait a minute. Should we add a few little highlights or you think we're good? I, we already did our highlights. We, did, we sure did. We did those up here. Yeah, we, I think okay. we're done. We're good, okay. So let's move all this. Take that out of the Oh my pencil. <laughs> and it's time for the final reveal. Ready? Ta-da! And this is how our cactus with lemons, still life, found object Friday turned out. I can't wait to see how yours turned out. So when you're done, if you can, ask your parents if you can snap a photo. Post and it. It, post it on Instagram and tag it with our classes for kids or email us at kimandiclassesforkids.com. And don't forget to do what? Yeah. If they and don't forget that to one. like, subscribe, and click the notifications bell so you can know when all of our new art videos are coming out. Yeah, and thanks for joining us. I hope you keep making cool, cool art. art.